You're building a convex application. It's fast, it's smooth, it's fully reactive, and you're at the point, it's time to integrate Stripe. It's time to get paid. Now you can integrate Stripe yourself, or you can use Convex's Stripe component, which is what I'm gonna be showing you in today's video. And all it takes, ladies and gents, is one NPM command, a couple minutes of setup, and you have one-time payments and subscriptions ready in your Convex applications. Instead of just talking, why don't we set this up together? So I have my terminal here. We're gonna spin up a fresh Convex project, NPM create Convex at latest. We're gonna call this demo app YouTube. Um, let's call it please subscribe because if you are watching this, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. Thank you so much. We're going to use Next.js. We're going to use Offkit WorkOS for our authentication. And the CLI is going to scaffold this project. So our project is ready to go. We're just going to run npm install. And then we're going to do npm run dev because we're going to have to set up our convex project. So we're going to call it the same name. We're not going to change the name. We're going to do a cloud deployment. And this is basically setting up our convex backend, setting up our AuthKit instance with WorkOS. And we are ready to go. If I go to localhost 3000, we're going to see our convex Next.js and WorkOS application. Now to set up Stripe using the convex Stripe component, we're just going to follow this quick start guide. So first things first, we're going to run npm install. So I'm just going to do that in a new tab. And then we're told to in a convex.config.ts file to add this code. We're going to go under convex. We're going to create convex.config.ts. We're going to paste this here. This is setting up the Stripe component. And then we're told we're going to need two environment variables, a Stripe secret key and a Stripe webhook secret. So in our convex backend, we're going to go to settings environment variables and it's here we're going to add these environment variables now to set this up we're going to need a stripe account hopefully you have one i have a test version a sandbox version here no i did i do not have a twenty five thousand dollar withdrawal coming soon hopefully one day but what we're going to do is we're going to get that secret key and that webhook secret so in the search i'm going to search api keys and you see here my stripe secret key so i'm going to go back to the docs just copy the name i'm going to add Stripe secret key, and I'm going to copy the secret key on Stripe, go back to my dashboard, click save, Stripe secret key has been added. Now to add the webhook secret, I'm gonna to need to set up a webhook, so I'm gonna search webhooks, and then this pops up. Now what I want us to do is on webhooks, click on add destination, right? Now there are some events, there are specific events we're going to have to select. You can select whichever ones you want, but in order to get this example going, I need to set up these 12 events. So I'm just going to select these events one by one. Many hours later. So I selected all the events, there are 12 in total. I'm going to click continue, click continue, and now it's going to ask us for our endpoint URL. And in order to get this, I'm going to go back to my dashboard, click on URL and deploy key, and we're going to get the HTTP actions URL, not the deployment URL, the HTTP actions URL. I'm gonna copy this. I'm going to go back here in my split screen. I'm gonna paste it here. But notice here it says we need to add the slash stripe slash webhook. So this is the webhook endpoint. Once we've done that, we're just gonna click create destination and we now have our webhook secret right in front of us. So I'm going to copy this right here and I'm going to go back to environment variables in the dashboard paste this here. I'm going to go back to the docs so I can copy the environment variable name exactly as is. And perfect. I click save and we are good to go. Now I need to register the webhook route. So what we're going to do is in our convex folder, we're going to create an HTTP.ts file and just copy this code. So let's go back to convex, HTTP.ts paste this right here. We're good to go. Let's go back to the next step. Now it's saying in the stripe.ts file, here are some actions I can use to create a subscription checkout or to create a payment checkout. So I'm going to copy this right here. And under convex, I'm going to create a stripe.ts file, and I'm going to paste this here. So this action is going to help me set up 
uh, subscription checkout. And this one is going to help me set up a payment checkout. I also have multiple methods available to me. I can use create checkout session, create customer, portal session, create customer, get or create customer, cancel subscription, reactivate subscription, update subscription quantity, and you can see all the available queries I have, the webhook events we track, and even in the webhook handler, if there's a specific event you'd like to track, you can add that simply. All this stuff will be in the repo down in the description down below and on this page as well. I'll link this down below. One more thing is when you go to the repo, if you click on example, there's actually an example app here called Benji Store. You can run the example app and you can look at the code, particularly if you look at the stripe.ts file, there's a couple more uh, actions that I have here that I use and I think it'd be a great starting point for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to copy this code right here, go back to the stripe.ts and I'm just going to paste this. In the stripe.ts, I do have an environment variable for app URL, but for the sake of time, I'm just gonna hard code this to localhost 3000. Our Stripe component is set up. Let's set up some subscriptions now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the homepage as is, but I'm going to create a dashboard page where a user has to be authenticated, but also has to pay in order to have access to that page. If they do not pay, they're going to see a nice, beautiful pricing card telling them that they need to subscribe. So with the beautiful help of AI, we created a dashboard page. You can see I'm authenticated, but I am not subscribed. So I see subscription required. And all we did was create a dashboard page under app page.tsx. Now there's one thing that we're missing in order to make subscriptions work, and that's a price ID. And in order to set up a price ID, all you do is you go back to Stripe. In your product catalog, you're going to create a new product. I already have made one, so I'm gonna use an existing one. I'm going to click on pricing, and then I'm going to grab price ID. I can click copy here. And in the code, I just have it hard coded here for ease of use. But what you're going to do is this subscription ID is going to be passed in create checkout. We're going to pass the price ID here. And the reason why we need the price ID, we need Stripe to know to which checkout to redirect us, which product to sell us. Now, how do we have subscription required popping up here? If I go back to dashboard.tsx, all we have here is a query that queries get user subscription Right, and all get user subscription does is it returns the user subscription. Again, all we're calling is components.stripe.public.list subscriptions by user ID, right? And we're getting the subscriptions. And then we're checking for any active subscriptions. And essentially, we just have a simple if statement here. If it's undefined, it's loading. And if there's no subscription, then we see the subscription required page. Now, in order to set up the checkout, all we did was call api.stripe.create subscription checkout, and then we pass this in handle subscribe. So now back here, I'm going to click on subscribe now. And then you can see I'm brought up to the hats of the month club subscription. I've entered the Stripe test card 42, 42, 42, 42, and just some random credentials. After that, I'm going to click subscribe and let's see if it works. And you see this time, in the dashboard page, I see the contents of the dashboard. If I go back to my Convex dashboard and I click on data, I see app here, but if I click on app and I click on Stripe, you can see I have the checkout session here, I have customer information here, I have invoices here, I have payments here, I have subscriptions here, so I have all the data that I need is in my database thanks to the Stripe component. And again, back on the dashboard page, I have access to the contents of the dashboard because I've made a payment. Let's say I wanted to cancel my subscription. I go to manage billing and then all I do is click cancel subscription. I will cancel. All of that is set up for me. Now again, the code for that is found in hand manage billing and I can see here I call get portal URL, which if I go to is an action called get customer portal URL and you can see here that I'm getting the customer ID from the subscription and then what I'm doing is I am creating a customer portal session and all that's needed to set that up was just this action right here. And that is pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. There's so much more that you can do with the Stripe component. I highly encourage you look at the repo down below and check out the example app here. It uses one-time payments, subscription payments. Uh, you can also do team-based, like seat-based payments or linking an organization to a specific payment. There's a lot of stuff here for you and the code is all here. And you can boot this up into cursor, whatever AI agent you wanna use. You can really maximize the power of Convex and Stripe 
easily all for you under one npm package ready for you to go but yeah make sure to like comment subscribe hit the notification bell let me know what other videos you'd like to see thank you so much for watching this video you've been awesome i've been ross i will see you in the next one peace